Luke chapter 1, verse 71. That we should be saved from our enemies. We are saved from our sins. Christ died for our sins. The whole Jerusalem thing, and the whole Judah thing, the whole Israel thing, the whole thing for the Jew is a land promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're not saved from our enemies. What do you do when the verse says, All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Marvel not if the world hates you, my brother. No, it hated me first. Oh, I'm saved. Oh, my enemy. No, 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 no. You got to realize from the time that Jesus is born to the time he is resurrected from the grave, it's Jewish. Half three quarters of the book of Acts that comes after the life of Jesus Christ, the life of the apostles outside of Paul is Jewish. Paul deals with Jewish people, but he is the apostle to the Gentiles. His books are written to Gentiles, the churches. Christ did not come to save us from our enemies. He saved us from our sins. And from the hand of all that hate us. Man, the Lord tarries. You will be scum of the earth in America. You can't even say, no, I'm not going to make a cake for your wedding in America. You can't say, no, I'm not going to do your flowers because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in the Bible and you're my best friend, but no, I won't do it. They'll make you go to school. They'll make you do a Daniel chapter 1 to try to change your mind over to Babylonian doctrine. And if you don't fall down and worship our golden image, we'll put you in a den of lions. We'll turn you over to Satan. We'll put you in a fiery furnace. This is Jewish. This is John the Baptist's father. He's speaking after a time that he couldn't speak for nine months. Zacharias is proclaiming that he's a prophet of the order of his son and the Lord Jesus Christ as the Messiah. He has not even been born and he has not even been rejected. You know, the Jews had received him as their Messiah. You couldn't explain how the Gentiles would get in. We are only getting in as a stumbling block to Israel. Us Gentiles getting in, God saying to the Jews, nya, 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 nya. you won't believe, they will, those dogs. Flea bitten, perverted, uh, gross kind of things they do. You think those do you think those Gentiles are bad? Naaman, I want you to go in the uh, in the Jordan wash seven times. Okay. All the prophets that God sent to Israel, repent, get right, repent, get right. No, we won't. So what do we do? Jewish. And we've got a lot of scripture to look at on this one, on this verse here. And it's all Jewish flavor. So, let's pick off with the enemy, Genesis 3.15. Genesis 3.15. Man has fallen. 
man has rebelled against God. Serpent speaks in verse 1. But verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Between thy seed, talking to the serpent, and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The serpent's seed. The woman's seed. Jesus said that uh, the, the, there was a man that planted wheat, and in the night somebody caved in and sold tares. There is wheat and there is tares. There are that of God and those that are of the enemy. Revelation 12 9. Revelation 12 9. We're, we're going to dig in deep. I hope we can finish. Time, may God bless us to finish. Revelation 12, verse 9. The great dragon. You mean China? Red China? The great dragon was cast out. The old serpent. Here's Genesis 3. Called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. So beyond Jews, the whole world. Marvel not the world hates you. Guess who's on the world side? And he deceives his own. He was cast out into the earth, and the angels were cast out with him. So he's got angels. He's a dragon, and he's the old serpent, and it's devil or Satan, capital D, capital S. Matthew chapter 13. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 13, verses 24. We're going to talk about Satan tonight, and he ain't going to like it. Because we're going to put the truth out. We're going to reveal the truth. Another parable put he, Jesus, forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man which sowed good seed in his field. Field is the world. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed terrors among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the terrors also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath the terrors? He said unto the enemy, Has done this. The servant said, Unto him, wilt thou that we go and gather them up? Shall we have the rapture now? Gather. Verse 37. And he answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Hmm. Who's looking for a kingdom? Jews. I'm looking for a city. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The wicked one. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire. The fire is the fire. Hell. So the Jews have two enemies. Number one, Satan. And number two, Gentile. Edomites or Esau were, were going up to Babylon. When Babylon was coming to Jerusalem and Judah and taking them away. Hey, hey, we got some Jews here. 
You find that in the Minor Prophets. I forget which one writes to the to the Edomites, but he said, "Listen, you stood in the way of the, of my people, and you're going to be judged." There were people that were selling out Jews to Adolf Hitler. There were people who be selling out Jews in the tribulation period. The only ally that the Jews have is a Bible-believing Christian. And in the tribulation period, they'll be gone. Jesus said, well, you visit me in the prison, you, you gave me food, la, 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 la. Well, because the Bible says, they said, Lord, when did we feed you? When did we take care of you? When did we do this? When did we, we, we don't know what we were doing. Paul tells us to pray for the peace in Jerusalem. That's what the Bible says. Now do a Google search on the internet. Why people hate Jews. And you will get a long list of websites. Isn't that interesting? Esther 3.10 Esther 3.10 If Satan could stop Judah, he would win. Because Jesus Christ comes from Judah. That's what he's doing. How do you try to stop A Abraham? Sarah being barren. Okay, I'll take care of it. God would magically give a woman a, a, a baby at what, 90, 95 years old, was it? How do you try to stop Rebecca? Well, she's my sister. And I believe she was barren. How did he try to stop Jacob? All kinds of ways. Wrestling with an angel. Wrestling with Laban. Laban was going to almost take the family back. Esau was going to kill him. How did he mess up Judah? Two of his boys did a uh, sin against God and he killed them. Judah ends up sleeping with his daughter-in-law, not even knowing it. And the son ends up in the line with Jesus Christ. And I believe that's the case where the, the hand came out of the birth canal first, and they tied a ribbon on it, and it pulled it back, and the next one came out and stand and said, well, this is a breach. Satan tried to even mess with the firstborn. But Esther 3, chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 10. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamidia, the Agonite, the Jews' enemy. Look at 9.10. Esther 9.10. The ten sons of Haman. Ten sons. You know somebody who has ten something? Is the enemy of the Jews, the son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews, one for Satan, one for the false prophet? How about verse, verse 24, one for the Antichrist, the unholy trinity? Chapter 9, 24, because Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agonite, check out Agai, right? The enemy of all the Jews. Wow, he's an enemy of the Jews, he's an enemy of the Jews, he's an enemy of all the Jews. All of them. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. I told you, we're talking about Satan here. We'll start in verse number 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon. Verse 9 we read. Having seven heads and... How many horns? Who that does match? 
Behold, a woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. That woman is Israel. Look at verse number one. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon, under her feet, upon her head, a crown of twelve stars. Check out Jake, uh, Joseph's dream in Genesis. Verse 13, And when the dragon saw that he was cast out of the earth, he persecuted a woman which brought forth the man-child. Verse 15, The serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Verse 17, The dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the raiment of her seed. Which keep the testimonies of God. Look at that. Satan has tried and tries to prevent the nation of Israel from Abraham. Abram. Yeah. Go down to Egypt. Okay. Okay, Satan. Now just tell her uh, she's your sister. She's my sister. Oh, honey, you know I can't have children. Yeah, I know. Here, here's my beautiful uh, maid. Take her. <laughs> you think that was God? Or do you think that was Satan? That was Abram. Ishmael's father is Abram, not Abraham. Get it right. Because of that mess, God said, i got to change your name to Abraham. I'm going to change her name to Sarah. And you know what I mean? Now, let's go through the line. Genesis 11.30. Let's look at how Satan has tried to destroy Israel. I think we've done this before, but let's do it again. Genesis 11, verse 30. We're going to look at how Satan has tried to destroy Jesus Christ. Now you run the list in Matthew 1. It goes back to Abraham. You go to the list of, of uh, Luke chapter 3. It goes back to Adam, but Abraham. Ready? 11, verse 30. Genesis eleven thirty. 30. But Sarah was barren, she had no child. Sarai was barren and had no child. <laughs> she can't have a baby. Bingo. That'd be uh, no male child of Abraham or Sarah, no Isaac. Genesis fifty twenty four. Genesis fifty twenty four. And we might be bouncing around here, but we, I like to do the verses in order, but sometimes, you know, this, uh, and that can't be 50, 24. But 50, 22 is, and Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born, you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save a lot. Kill the male uh, Jewish children. Kill the boys. Save the girls for us, but kill the boys. And that, no, that was Exodus. What am I doing here? Genesis 50, verse 24. Well, that was a good thing to step on. I was in Exodus, chapter 1. I'm sorry. But Genesis 50, 24. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I died. And God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land into a land which he swear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Well, at the end of Genesis 50, there, there's a boy named Isaac. But in Genesis 11.30, it said, no. There wasn't. Exodus 2.24.
And God heard their groans, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob. In Exodus, there's a boy of Abraham. So God said, I'll give you seed. Satan made it so she couldn't have a baby. God, that's no problem. And we go into the book of Exodus just before they become a nation, and we read Abraham, Isaac, and we read Jacob, but we're not there yet. So Satan didn't get the victory at all. Now, let's go to Genesis 25-21. All right, I didn't win with, with Sarah. And we could go in with Hagar, but we didn't go that route. We could spend a week in the Bible on Satan, how he tried to stop Jesus Christ. But in Genesis 25-21, let's see Satan step up again. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. All right, we have a male offspring of Abraham, but Isaac's done. He's not going to have a child. So there'll be no Jacob. And then we read that God gives her ability to produce a child. And then we have Jacob and Esau. Genesis 27, 41. And we're not doing a full study of Satan, but we're looking at the key points here of where Satan tried to stop Jesus Christ. Genesis 27:41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherein his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, a Middle Eastern man with anger, the days of mourning for my father at hand, then will I slay my brother Jacob, how serious is that threat? And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. It is recorded that he said it in his heart. Who told Rebekah? God did. You know how serious Esau was angry with Jacob? God had to speak to Rebekah. you got to get that boy out of here. Satan said, I'll kill Jesus Christ by having Esau kill Jacob. God stepped in with Sarah, a 90-year-old woman having a baby. God stepped in with Rebecca, who couldn't have a baby. God has stepped in and said, you got to get that boy out of here before he gets killed. If Esau had killed Jacob, the firstborn blessed son, that's what we just read. That's what you read in chapter 27. Esau is given the firstborn blessing. That would have gotten rid of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the blessing goes to the firstborn son. You want you want to go all the way? Look at Genesis 4 1. How Satan works. Here he destroyed the mother and father, husband and wife. Genesis 4.1. Watch how he's going to attack the children now. See, after he gets mom and dad and husband and wife, then he goes to work on the children. After the husband and wife were destroyed and rebelled against God, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, I guess he still loved her. And she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bared his brother Abel. Now whether they were twins or there were two separate children, Adam must have loved Eve. Abel was a keeper of the sheep. Shepherd, get that. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the process of time, Cain, 
came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground, his offering to the Lord, and Abel, he brought his offering. And the Lord didn't have respect unto, unto Cain, but he had respect unto Abel. And it says in verse 8, And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Now here comes Satan. And it came to pass when they were in the field. Oh, you mean a good seed and a bad seed were in the field? That Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and one fourth of the population of the world was killed by Satan, John 8 44. You go read John 8 44. He was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. What was that place that we read in uh, the Gospel of Matthew? The one that, that did the, the, the tear was of the wicked one? You know how Satan tried try to get rid of Jesus Christ? He got rid of the shepherd. He left the fruit stand. The man's works. Genesis 31, 36. We're seeing how Satan tried to get rid of and destroy Jesus Christ through a race of people called Jew. Read the accounts of the Nazis, Germany, and the Jews in World War II. Genesis 31, verse 36. It is recorded, and Jacob was wroth, and chode with Laban. And Jacob answered, said to Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin that thou hast so hotly pursued it after me? All right? And he goes on to say, oh, uh, verse 43. Laban answered, saying to Jacob, These daughters are my daughters. No, they're not. Once you give that girl over to that man, it is no longer your daughter. These children are my children. No, you're not. These cattle are my cattle. No, they're not. He worked for them. All that thou, uh, all that thou seest is mine. You know how Satan stepped into this one with Laban and, and, and Jacob? Laban could have taken it all. And what would Jacob would have done? Jacob was all by himself. He is empty. There would have been no nation of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those 12, oh, 11 children, those 11 boys, would have belonged, would have belonged to Laban. Jacob was only one man. He could have been killed. Who would have known? The Lord stepped in and talked to Laban, verse 24. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. That put the fear. Had God not intervened like a 90-year-old woman giving birth to a baby, a woman who, who was uh, barren to give birth, to speak to a mother say, you better hide that child. Speak to a father-in-law and say, you better knock it off, buddy. There would have been no Jewish race. Had God not intervened in World War II, you think there would have been any Jews left? Satan would love. He's got a chalkboard or something somewhere. Babylon, he's got it X'd off. Gone. Babel, he's got it X'd off. Gone. Amorites, gone. Jews, oh, I wish. He's got England X'd off. America, he's got half an X. And we're not done. Genesis 35, 22. We could spend time in Genesis alone in Exodus. 
And Satan working against the Jews. 35-22. That's why you got to pray for him. And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in the land that Reuben went and laid with Bilhah, his father's concubine. Reuben loses the birthright here because Reuben is the firstborn. Satan says, why don't you go sleep with that woman? Isn't that what he told Abram? Jacob. Oh, I'll work for, for uh, Rachel. He gets slipped in Leah. And then two handmaids, and then the battle goes on. Hagar. Man, now you're getting to a sexual mess here. You're getting into adultery. You're getting into fornication here. Do you know that what happened to Reuben right here happens to the Corinthian church that, G that, that Paul rebukes? You got to de-church that guy. What do you mean keeping him there? That's exactly what happens to Reuben. You know one of the 13 curses that they're supposed to be on Mount Ebal and I forget the other mountain? Do you know one of the 13 curses, uh, one of the curses where you're not to sleep with your father's wife? And they're to say, Amen! Imagine Reuben saying that. The children of Reuben, oh, man, that's our family. Hide that under the, the, the dust. The firstborn is defiled by adultery with incense. Genesis 49.3. 49.3. What happened? What happened to Reuben? It's not Jesus, the, the, the seed of, of Reuben. Because look what happens. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, the beginning of my strength, the excellent deity, and the excellent power. Reuben's in there. Yeah! All right! Hey, I'm going to get it all. Unstable as water. Well, thou shalt not excel. Because thou wentest up to thy father's bed. And defiles thou it. He went up to my couch. Uh-oh. Satan got the victory. Here, Reuben didn't become the seed of the, of the Messiah. Reuben is just a sandwich name. Genesis twenty five thirty four. Satan's working. He works on the firstborn. He don't want the Lord, he don't want the word to get out. 27. Now we're looking at the firstborn. I know I'm sorry we're bouncing back and forth, but we're looking at the birth. We're looking at weird births. We're looking at enemies. We're looking at problems. We're looking at the birth now. Genesis 25. I'll leave you to read the rest of the story yourself, but verse 34. Because of hunger, Jacob gave Esau bread and porridge of lentils. Beans. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way, and Esau despised his birthright. Wait a minute, did we read was it did we read uh, help me here? Help me. Abraham, Isaac, Esau, is that what we read? We should have. But for a mess of beans, being so hungry. Satan said, get the beans to sell the birthright. Okay. How much you want for those beans, Jacob? I'll take the birthright. Sold. So Esau ends up with dukes. Not tribes. Esau, I forget which, which minor prophet writes about him. He is cursed. Because he doesn't help his brother Esau, uh, Israel. He won't even let them in the land when they're going to the promised land. He won't even help them when, when Babylon came to take over. He was an enemy. God goes up to, I mean, Satan goes up to the chalkboard. 
Edomites, Esau, X. Ha <laughs> ha! Should have been Abraham, Isaac, Esau, then whoever his first, I don't even know who his first, I mean, it's in there, but I don't know who it is. You know who one of Esau's children, grandchildren are that caused his problem to Israel? Elimelech? You've heard of his name? You know one of the names of Esau's, uh, I believe his grandchildren, has a name in the Bible? Uz? Where Job came from? Man of Uz? Alright. Esau saw his birthright. Genesis 34, 25. We're just in the book of Genesis. Yeah. How much Gen you think Genesis is just the book of the beginning? It's about the attack of Satan on one group of people. Where is the attack on the Babylonian? Where is the attack on It's not there? Genesis 34, 25. And it came to pass on the third day, when they were sore, that the two sons of Jacob, Simeon Livian, uh, Levi, excuse me, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew all the males. All right, see, what we'll do is we'll make you part of us. you got to circumcise yourself. And when they were sore, because the circumcision will be sore because they don't have the modern medicine, Levi and Simeon, the next two boys in line for the birthright, Murder. Go back to John eight forty four and read that one. So Simeon and Levi have now also taken Satan's side. They didn't sleep with their father's uh, uh, wife like like uh, Reuben did. It wasn't adultery. Here is murder. Now do you see why God put in the Ten Commandments, the Big Ten? Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery. You imagine it can you imagine Simeon? Can you imagine Levi? Can you imagine Reuben sitting there here? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Reuben oh boy. I want to hear that. We heard that from Moses. Thou shalt not commit a murder. There's Simeon and Levi. Oh boy. And that was that was the work of Satan in their lives. God is trying to protect the Jews. He's trying to protect Judah. Don't mess up. Look, at, look what Jacob says in verse 30. Protection of God. Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have troubled me to make me to stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Parasites. I being few in number, they shall gather themselves against me and slay me. Satan would love to have that happen. Guess whose protection was there? Verse uh, chapter thirty-five, verse one. And God said, "Jacob, get out of there." Remember that happened before. Jacob is about to be killed by the inhabitants of the land. God says to him, get out. Let's step it up a notch. Genesis 35, 5. Ready? Ready for this one? Remember the Ten Commandments? And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. There's protection. But look what happens. And let's see, just for the sake of time, we want to, verse 4. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hands, and all their earrings which they in their ears. All right, I can't get them by sex. I can't get them by firstborn. I can't get them by, all right, let's get into idolatry. What is one of the commandments, the Ten Commandments now on this one? Those Ten Commandments is it's because of Genesis. 
because the root of these men and these women that God has called out to be his people. I mean, can you imagine God's over oh, yeah, oh, man, another, oh, write down another commandment down. How many commands are we going to get, God? I, I know all, it's going to be ten of them, but just keep writing them go. And this came from Rachel, from her father, when she stole his gods. Now Jacob has an idolatry problem in the family. Have you read what God said about idolatry in Exodus 20? You know, in the law, adultery and murder, there is no sacrifice, there is no offering. You better thank God they're not under the law right now. <laughs> they're not. Satan would have victory. And we can't have victory in Satan. So Satan tries to destroy Israel. We've seen that with the, the relations and the family and the barrenness and all that. Number two, he tries to get God angry to destroy them. Look at Exodus 32.10. Now he's been, all that didn't work. All right, let's get God angry with him. Exodus 32, 10. Now therefore let me, that's God speaking alone, that my wrath may, that my, my wrath, yeah, my wrath may wax hot against them, that I may consume them. And make of thee a great nation. Satan's like, yeah, all right. God is angry with him. And Moses steps in. Oh. You better thank God you have a Jesus Christ that steps in your life. Lord, he's only human. He's a sinner. He's washed in the blood. Leviticus 10.6. Leviticus 10.6. I'll get God angry with him. Now this is to the priest. And Moses said unto Aaron, to Eliezer, and Ithamar, the son, his son, Uncover not your heads. Neither rend your clothes, lest ye die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. Well, that's kind of strange because Nahab and Abihu were just killed when they offered strange fire to God. If God pronounces judgment upon somebody because they've done wrong, don't you dare. Don't you dare as priest class would be. Don't you even mourn. I'll get the people. I'm angry with them. And then you can look up on your own time, Numbers 11.33, then Numbers 16.46. All right? You ready? Let's go through this, and we'll be done. Yeah, a lot more passages. But let's get into Matthew 2.16. Matthew 2.16. Christ of the Eternal. New Testament. Satan out to destroy Jesus Christ, the Jew. And Matthew 2. Sixteen. And Herod, when he saw that he was mocked with the wise men, was exceedingly wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children. He did more than the Exodus. Exodus said, keep the girls alive. I couldn't stop the pregnancy. I couldn't uh, abort the baby. All right, I'm going to get Herod. He's going to kill all the boys and all the girls. Get them all. And guess who steps in and protects Jesus? God. Matthew 4 9. 
Satan is now attacking Jesus Christ himself. 4 9. He said to them, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Let's get Jesus to worship Satan himself. That didn't work. John 10 31. Satan is out to destroy Jesus. John chapter 10 verse 31. It didn't work through the nation of Israel, so let's go after Jesus himself. Then the Jews, oh, now we're going to use the Jews. Wait, we're going against the world against the Jews. We're going against Satan against Jesus. Now that didn't work. Let's take the Jews who are God's people. And let's, the Jews took up stones again to stone him. How do you like that? John 19, 12. We're not done yet. John 19, 12. Satan is busy. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Here are the Jews again. Satan's getting the Jews and wants the Jews this man dead in the hands of a Gentile government. You see how, how we're going back to the Gentiles? Abraham went to Egypt. Abraham had an Egyptian handmaid. Laban tried to get Jake, uh, yeah, Jacob. Here we are back again. Let's get the Gentiles to, to, to stop everything of God's work. All right, Acts 4, 1. Acts 4, 1. Uh-oh. You know we got a problem here? Jesus Christ has risen from the grave and seated at the right hand of the Father now, right? Acts 1. Acts 4. We got a big problem here. And as they spake unto the people, the priests, the captains of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them. Being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day. For it was now even time. Jesus risen. Okay, you know what Satan said? Now let's persecute the man of God. Let's jail him. We've gone after the Jews. We want to stop Jesus Christ. I want to kill the seed of Jesus. Couldn't do it. All right, let's get Jesus Christ. Couldn't do it. Let's get the Jews to get Jesus Christ. Couldn't do it. Jesus is in victory. Let's get the people of Jesus Christ now. That was the Jews in verse 1. Going after the Christians. Chapter 5, verse 40. All right, we'll put them in jail. 540. And to them they agreed, and when they had called the apostles, and beated them. Beaten them. Jail didn't stop them. Let's beat them. Did that stop? Acts chapter 7, verse 54. Acts 7, 54. And for the sake of time, it was 57. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, called upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. When he had, had said the, when he had said thus, he fell asleep. Let's kill him. Jail didn't work. Being didn't work. Chapter 8, verse 1. And Saul consented unto his death. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church. Everywhere. In Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Jerusalem. 
2 Timothy 3.12. Today. 2 Timothy 3.12. Today. 2 Timothy 3.12. Today. Yea, and all they that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall get a shall get a thousand dollars for every dollar. I have all their prayers answered. If that prayer worked, if we were to get everything we want as being Christians, that would violate from Genesis and all the life of Christ and all the life of the Book of Acts. That's in a violation of Satan's work to get rid of the man of God, the child of God, the nation of God. The Bible states that, Yea, all they that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. There you go. And your persecution goes all the way back to, you want to say Abraham? No, it goes all the way back to Abel. And when God called out one man, Abram, we as children of God are in the footsteps of Abel. We are in the footsteps of Abram. Everyone and Satan wants to get rid of the Jewish people. Everyone wants to get rid of the true Christian. Now, if your life is not in persecution in any way, shape, or form, you are not living a life of Christian, and you may not be a Christian, because your life is to be under the microscope of Satan, and then when you wake up in the morning, that he has to wake up all his angels in hell and say, Get out there and stop him! When you go out your door of your house, you ought to make every angel in hell tremble. And that is why God has given you an armor. Because you are in a battle. Now that was just one verse that we read. But there was a lot in there. The nation of Israel has an enemy. Christians have an enemy. Because we are beloved in the, in the eyes and in the heart of God. And that irritates the fire out of Satan. You know why Job was attacked? Because God loved him. And Job loved God. You know why Satan attacks the Christian today? Because we're trying to live God. We're trying to do what God wants us to do. Yeah, we fail. Yeah, we do wrong. We're sinners. But if our motive is right and our heart is right, that angers. See, he couldn't prevent Jesus from being born. He couldn't get Jesus to fail. The only thing he's got right now to his dying day into the lake of fire in Revelation chapter 12 is to stop Christian. He'll be happy when the church is raptured. But then again, He's going to have to deal with the Jews again. The 144,000. <laughs> and don't you think he'd be out to kill them? Do you think Adolf Hitler had a field day with Jews and killing them? After what we just read? And when you read in Revelation 12, he knows his time is short. Don't you think that Satan will have a love feast, a barbecue, a, 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 a uh, uh, I think of a word there, buffet? Of killing God's people. His last chance. The Bible records that after the millennium, when Satan is loose from his chains, he gathers an army one last time for what? Go read it. Against the people of God. His dying breath before he's cast in the lake of fire, he's still fighting God. Don't you ever think Satan's a pussycat. He is a soldier too. And he'll fight, 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 fight. 